So the Greater Dublin area would have a population of 1.5 million and 500 square kilometres. I would describe Dublin as a kind of an urban sprawl type of city. Uh, there isn't an awful lot of high-rise development and it's something that the planners have been giving a lot more attention to over, over the last 10 years in particular. We have a fleet of uh, about approximately 1,100 vehicles at this moment in time. Uh, we operate about 220 routes. Uh, we offer, operate a predominantly double-deck fleet with um, I think the only exceptions now being 20 bendy buses. Um, our passenger numbers are uh, 500,000 people every day, uh, which is equivalent to approximately 150 million passengers per annum. We see this project as being hugely important in enabling us to tell the passenger exactly what's happening on the road. Because we have such a predominance of buses, therefore, that um, have one end at least, uh, either in the city centre or going through the city centre, traffic congestion is, is a big issue for us. Um, and trying to ensure that we can control uh, our buses and ensure that uh, we have some systems in place to, to enable us to, to make sure that buses are on schedule or as close to schedule as they possibly can be is a big problem for us. I think the other most important point to make is that we tended to concentrate an awful lot on buses leaving Termini on, on the right time and on schedule. But obviously if a bus is taking a route that maybe lasts uh, 60 to 90 minutes, there's an awful lot of intermediate times that we actually don't take notice of at all. In addition to all of that, currently the information we give to our passengers on the roadside is timetable based information. It's historic information. Uh, there is no real time element to it whatsoever. So we embarked on a project to uh, deploy AVL across the full Dublin bus fleet, primarily as a control tool for our inspectors to get better regulation of services, better headway between vehicles, better punctuality and a better service for the customers. Yeah, at the end of the tendering process, when the evaluations were completed, the most uh, economical system for us and the most practical system for us to implement was an AVL system which used the TAST TNDS radio system to uh, carry the data. We see the planning aspect of this as being very, very beneficial. We would see the AVL system as actually having a number of roles. One is confirming actually how we're doing on a day-to-day -day basis, how we actually plan for the future, which is a key thing actually that, that, that this information would provide us. Currently at the moment we wouldn't have that, that information available to us. We would rely on probably ticketing information to, to provide that, but again it's actually at the, the driver's discretion in terms of stage updating that, that probably would give us that information. The advantage of moving to AVL when you already have a Tate system is that the uh, focus still remains on the Tate system and even in more detail that you go into the Tate system and you see what's available and what features and advantages can be used in conjunction with an AVL system to, to make the system better. Uh, to accommodate AVL we um, moved from the T2030 radio to the TMH235 radio. Now the TMH235 radio was introduced because of its data capabilities and its communication over Mach 27 to the onboard computer, the co-pilot, um, and also um, it will send the data back to the central system from the bus environment. We've, we've had our uh, discussions with Dublin City Council to uh, implement a system of uh, traffic light priority for the buses on the AVL system. Uh, given that we can track the vehicles in real time, we know where they are, we can tell the city authority where they are. We can also look for extra priority of buses running behind schedule. So there's two interfaces we're implementing. One, we will have a direct communication with the roadside uh, traffic light control unit, where the bus, as it approaches the traffic junction, will uh, pre-announce its imminent arrival. When it gets to the junction, it will give a further message to uh, tell the tra traffic light controller it's there requesting priority and then passing through the junction we give further messages to clear down. Uh, on the bus uh, the driver has a, a console on which uh, he can see his uh, scheduled adherence. One of the
of the most important um, aspects of a passenger waiting at a bus stop is the passenger uncertainty about have I just missed the bus, when will the next bus be, what bus is coming to this bus stop, am I standing in the right location. Um, what the real-time passenger information aspect of the AVLC system will enable us to do is get rid of all of that uncertainty. It will tell the passenger very, very clearly when the next bus is coming, what route the next bus is coming from. That information, we, we believe, will encourage more people to use public transport and those that are using public transport to be much more certain about what's going to happen.